Welcome to the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist or you can ask a question to any and all of the panelists. Also, just a reminder, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there is one other block of sessions this evening, so please do feel free to sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, which will be Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Hi everyone, my name is Mara Miller and I am here representing Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and um, I'm trying to get my screen shared with you all. And not finding my presentation, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, oh, here it is, okay. Just, is everyone seeing my screen okay? Uh, we can, you might just wanna put in the presentation mode. Yep, there it is, looks good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, so Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University um, specialized in aviation and aerospace education. We have two residential campuses, one in Prescott, Arizona, and one in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, I am from our Prescott, Arizona campus, but I can, I will be sharing with you contact information for both me and my counterpart. If you are interested in Daytona Beach, I can give you her contact information. So just to start out, um, the College of Aviation, uh, just to talk to you about the programs that we offer, College of Aviation is probably what we're best known for. If you've heard of Embry-Riddle before, you probably do associate us with our flight training programs. Uh, if you're interested in training to become a professional pilot, then aeronautical science is the degree that you would want to look into. Um, if you're interested in aviation, you're not sure if you really, if you actually want to be the pilot, then we do have a variety of other aviation related programs. Um, so if you want to become an air traffic controller or if you want to get into unmanned aircraft systems, for example, um, those are some other programs that you can look into. Next, we have our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, in this college, we have um, some biology degrees, psychology degrees. Um, we have our um, simulation science, space physics, data science, astronomy. Um, we also have a focus on forensic sciences. So if you have an interest in forensics with biology, psychology, um, accounting, um, this would be the programs in this college is what you would want to look at. Next, we have our College of Business or School of Business. Um, the degrees in here, um, Aviation Business Administration is a great program to go into um, if you're interested in business, but you would also like to work in the aviation industry. This is um, a degree um, that will set you apart from just an ordinary business major because you will know everything that other business majors know, but you will also understand um, how the aviation industry works and it will make you more desirable to employers. Um, our Phi Beta Lambda Club is our business club and um, they actually win our state championship in Arizona every single year. So that's just evidence of how strong our business program is regardless of whether or not you wanna go into the aviation industry. Or... Um, next we have our College of Engineering. Aerospace engineering is the largest major that we have um, on both of our campuses. Um, you would either study or you would study both aeronautical and astronautical engineering with this major, um, but you would choose a focus. So starting in your junior year, you would do a specialty track in either aeronautics or astronautics. Um, all of our engineering majors have um, an emphasis on hands-on learning. 
Um, we have a variety of labs you'll see in the picture here, um, our wind tunnel lab. So these are all things that you get to utilize as an undergraduate student. We do have a focus on making sure that undergraduate students get opportunities to do hands-on work, lab work, um, design projects, research projects, things like that. Um, culminating in a senior design, senior capstone project, your senior year, where you would actually emulate what you would do once you're actually working out in the industry. All of our engineering majors are ABET accredited. Um, next, we have our College of Security and Intelligence Studies. If you are interested in working for the FBI, CIA, three-letter agency, or in the corporate world, they also have the need for intelligence professionals um, doing um, intelligence analysis then one of these programs would be a good fit for you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a focus on hands-on learning and that's not just in engineering, but all of our degrees. So here you see just some examples. We have our award-winning flight team. They've won 12 national championships competing with other collegiate aviation programs. We've had students who have gotten to study neutrinos at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Um, and we also have students who received a grant to um, research barrier technology um, in our schools. We do have two residential campuses, um, Prescott, Arizona and Daytona Beach, Florida. Our Arizona campus is smaller at 3000 students. We are located up in Northern Arizona. We're about an hour and a half drive north of Phoenix. Um, the Daytona Beach, Florida campus is larger at 7,000 students. They're located about five miles from the beach. Um, they are in a larger metropolitan area. Um, both of our campuses have small class sizes with all classes taught by professors. We have an abundance of clubs and organizations for you to get involved in outside of school. Um, we also have sports, intercollegiate, club, and intramural. Um, Air Force and Army ROTC is offered at both campuses and Navy ROTC is available at the Daytona Beach campus. If you are interested in applying for admission, you're going to apply in the fall of your senior year. We do want you to choose only one campus when you submit your application for admission. Um, if you're undecided, it is not that hard to switch, so just pick the one you're leaning towards. Um, if you want to jot down this four letter code, you don't have to pay the application fee. We will waive that for you. And then all you'll need to do is send us a high school transcript to complete your application. Um, we will, um, you may also include uh, letters of recommendation, SAT or SA. This is my contact information as well as my um, counterpart in Daytona Beach. So um, if you would like to speak with us further um, with any questions that you have about Embry-Riddle, please reach out to us and thank you. Thank you very much, Embry-Riddle. Um, up next is St. Louis University. Hey, good evening, everyone. Let's see, just to make sure. Okay, so uh, my name is Richard Brown, and I obviously am, am one of the many admission counselors here at St. Louis University. I cover Indiana, Michigan, Oklahoma, and then parts of Chicago, uh, but I'm going to spend the next five or six minutes just giving you a quick rundown of everything St. Louis University has to offer. Um, so we have actually two campuses, uh, and I know it might be confusing, but our campuses are actually separate degree granting universities, so you would actually apply to them separately. So you'd either apply to the St. Louis University St. Louis campus or you would apply separately to the St. Louis University Madrid campus. Uh, but those are two options that you that you do have. Today I'm going to be focusing just on the St. Louis campus itself. So all of these numbers will be for St. Louis campus, not the Madrid campus. So we have about 8,000 undergraduates uh, with around 12,500 students total. So that includes non-traditional students, uh, doctoral candidates, and, and uh, grad students. Uh, we are the oldest uh, Jesuit University west of the Mississippi, founded in 1818. We are the oldest university west of the Mississippi um, in, the, in the United States. So we've been here for a long time and uh, we're still rolling. Um, so we are a, a Jesuit university. And so that means different things to different people. Uh, so Jesuits, if you didn't know, are the largest order of Catholic priests. Um, what it really means to be a Jesuit institution has to do with our philosophy and education. We want to educate you as a whole person in and out. So we're more worried about who you become when you leave uh, and not as concerned about what you become in your career. 
And so one of the one of the biggest ways that, that we fulfill that promise of becoming a whole person is through our service organizations that we have on campus. So all told, uh, students, staff, and faculty members complete about 2 million community service hours per year. So that is something that is, that is relatively constant throughout the entire year. There are always going to be service opportunities available for students, staff, and faculty every single year. And we just believe that's what makes you a, a really great Jesuit student. Um, that being said, just because we are Jesuit, only about 40% of our students are Catholic. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean we're just for Jesuits. We are home to all faiths because so our philosophy strives for education as a whole person first. So areas of study, being a Jesuit institution, we have want to educate you once again as a whole person. So 90 different undergraduate programs for the study and all of our majors are direct entry. So a lot of our popular majors are physical therapy, biology, accounting and business, aerospace engineering, nursing is a really popular one. And then we also have a pretty rigorous flight science program. Uh, that you'll leave as a as a commercial pilot. Um, so nursing, physical therapy, and occupational therapy are direct entry only. So you won't be able to transfer into those your sophomore or junior year. Once you're in, if you get in your freshman year, you're in uh, for, for your, your entire experience here at St. Louis University. And we also really do believe in hands-on learning. So a lot of our a lot of our buildings are dedicated lab space. So we're going to try and get you into that classroom, into that lab, working with your hands as soon as possible. Obviously, with this last year with COVID, a lot of our classes went virtual. So we've had of our, our faculty members have a lot of different programs to sort of help supplement that hands-on learning virtually. Um, but we, we hope to get back into the full swing of things come this fall. Uh, so student involvement is also an extremely popular thing here at St. Louis University. We have 18 D1 sports. In addition, we have approximately 30 club sports for students to be involved in. Um, that is, is something that students find their passion for maybe before they came here or they, they learn while they're here. Hey, I know maybe I should start taking the soccer thing a little bit more seriously and they're joining our, our traveling club team, um, which, is, which is pretty amazing. And uh, if you're not into athletics like myself, we have uh, over 150 different student organizations. So those are all student ran, student founded, student led, um, and, and, and a wide variety of interests. Uh, we anywhere from cultural, religious interests, um, to academic interests, anything in between you can find here. Uh, and if you are into Greek life, we have seven fraternities, seven sororities, and then 10 different multicultural fraternities here on campus. And as I mentioned before, we do have a campus in Madrid. So we are an extremely study abroad friendly campus. About 60 to 65% of our students do study abroad, with Madrid being our by far our most popular spot to study abroad, just because every degree path can go and study abroad in Madrid. That includes nursing and those clinicals starting that junior year. But we have other 42 different countries that we do work with universities in those countries uh, to offer study abroad opportunities. And so all your financial aid goes with you. And so we, we really do encourage students to go study abroad, learn, and, and sort of broaden your horizons. So how do you become a St. Louis University Billiton? Uh, you can either apply online through our website, that's free. Um, or you can use the common application. That's obviously the, the most popular choice. We will need your official transcripts. You'll hear that from all of us. Official means from a school official. Uh, you cannot email those into us. If you are an international student, uh, we are requiring some uh, English proficiency exams. So those, I know the, um, the exams have, have the, the, the work for those have, has been a little different this last year. So we're accepting more exams than we usually do. But if you are an international student who has studied in the US your entire high school career, you can waive those exams. You do not have to take them. Uh, we also recommend letters of recommendation, uh, resume, and an admission interview with your admission counselor. That would be me. Uh, and we would ask that those applications be done by December 1st. So that's the priority deadline for all of those direct entry uh, majors and a lot of our scholarships and honors programs. That deadline is by December 1st. Uh, we are also, we just recently went uh, test optional, so we do not require an ACT or an SAT test score. So that's something that we're going to be moving forward with for the next couple of years until we make a final decision on if we're going to stick with that or if we're just going to go test blind in the future. Um, so that's just a, a quick snippet about St. Louis University. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me in the chat uh, and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you very much, St. Louis University. And yes, that is a good reminder for any of the attendees who recently joined us. Please do feel free to ask any questions to any of the panelists utilizing the Q&A.
But up next is Purdue University Northwest. Okay, well, hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm with Purdue University Northwest. I'm gonna try and cover this in my six minutes. I know I'm short on time here. Okay, so Purdue University Northwest, we have actually two campus locations as well. So we are located in Northwest Indiana, just past the border um, on the Indiana side of Illinois. So we have a campus in Hammond, Indiana, and then one in Westville, Indiana, which is kind of by Michigan City. Our campus is one application does grant you access to both campus locations. Um, so you only have to do the one application, you'll have access to both of those, all of the resources included with that as well. So just kind of to break us down by number, so we offer just over 70 different areas of study. So we offer um, 73 majors and 60 minors with some certificates and graduate schools included um, as well. We are primarily a medium sized campus. So we serve around 10,000 students on our campuses, but keep our class sizes um, relatively small. So we have a 20 to one student faculty ratio. Um, class sizes for us is roughly around 25 students. Sometimes senior year, you may have a class with only you know six to 10 students. So we like to give you that intimate feel. So you're gonna get that vibrant campus experience, but still getting that one-on-one -on -one attention with your professor. In terms of the programs that we offer, I'll cover these kind of quickly, but we have a college of business that does have an AACSB accreditation, and that is only to the top 5% of business programs in the nation. So we're very excited about that. That's gonna be for students interested in accounting, finance, hospitality, tourism management, uh, marketing, human resources. So a lot with our college of business. This one does have a 96% job placement rate after graduation within the first six months of graduation. So um, they are doing relatively well in that field, which is great. Then we have our College of Engineering and Sciences kind of broken up into two groups. For engineering, we offer mechanical, electrical, civil, and computer. It has an ABET accreditation, 98% job placement rate after graduation. Next to that is gonna be the sciences side. That's going to include biology, chemistry, physics, environmental science, forensic science, mathematics will be included in that as well. Again, very hands-on field, probably the most hands-on that we have on our campus in terms of lab work. You will start in that lab freshman year kind of get going, you have that senior design project your senior year to help coordinate with an outside company. Our College of Humanities, Education and Social Sciences is the largest college that we have on our campus. This is gonna be for students interested in psychology, sociology, criminal justice, education, foreign languages, history, um, communication. So it's kind of a great one-stop shop. The cool thing about this college is we also offer the most graduate programs under this college as well. So a lot of students for us choose to transition from the undergraduate into the graduate side. We have something called a four plus one program. So you would do four years of an undergraduate and then be able to get your master's degree in just one year versus the standard two years. College of Nursing for us is the most competitive program we have on campus. It is a direct admit program. So all of our programs are direct admissions during your application. Our College of Nursing does enroll two times a year. So fall and spring semester. It has an ASIN accreditation with a 98% NCLEC passing rate and 100% job placement rate after graduation. Finally, for academics is our College of Technology, and this is going to be, you know, your computer information technology, computer graphics, cybersecurity will be in here, and then our engineering technology fields. It does have an accreditation, so it has been reviewed. It's got the ATMAE accreditation, so those programs have been reviewed. This has about a 96% job placement rate after graduation. In terms of our application, um, if you're like, hey, those programs sound great, I like the placement rates, our application is available on our website, which is just pnw.edu. We are not currently on the common application or coalition application, so you will apply directly on our website. It's meant to be very simple, no essays involved, no letters of recommendation, anything like that. All we need is your application and an official transcript sent from your high school or your college, wherever you're attending. We are also test optional, so we do not require an SAT or ACT scores. Um, those are also not required for scholarship consideration. 
In terms of cost of tuition, a lot of students here that were out of state from where they're living, so I think tuition is going to be outrageous. Um, we do separate in-state versus out-of-state, in-state being anyone living in the state of Indiana at just around 7,900 in academic year, so that includes fall and spring semester at full-time status. Out-of-state students, that's anywhere living in the United States outside of Indiana, are looking at around 11,500 in academic year, including fall and spring semester, and that does include tuition and all standard fees. This is before any financial aid or any scholarships come into play. Um, this slide just lets you know that we have some resources available for our students that's all included in their cost of tuition to kind of help them with the struggles of college. So things like accessing our tutoring center or our writing center. We have a health center on campus in case you're away from home and you know get sick or need to go see a doctor. Counseling center in case you just want to talk about something that's going on, whether that be academic or non-academic. Last thing to cover with you guys is athletics. So we are NCAA Division II. So you guys can see our Division II teams up there. We also have some varsity, non-varsity and spirit squads. If you're not an athlete, that's okay. We do have student organizations, just over 150 student organizations ranging from religious organizations to fraternities, sororities, specific majors will have their own. We also have intramural sports if you'd like to play for an on-campus team, but maybe not competitively, just a great way to get involved. Again, we wanna offer you guys that vibrant college experience while making sure that you have that personalized attention and feeling very at home while you're with us. The final screen is just so you guys can get to know our staff. Again, my name's Emily, so my contact information's in that bottom left-hand corner. You can reach out with any questions that you guys may have, um, and I'm, you know, we'll be here in the chat if you need anything. Thank you very much, Purdue University. Um, our next presenter comes from Indiana University Northwest. You're on mute, Candace. Thank you. I am Candace Rayburn. I'm an admissions counselor here at IU Northwest. Uh, and I'm also the scholarship coordinator um, for the Office of Admissions. And I just want to share a little bit about Indiana University Northwest. Uh, we're located in the beautiful Glen Park area of Gary, Indiana. We're also a part of the Indiana University system where there are a total of nine campuses. However, we do service the Northwest uh, area of Indiana uh, as well as parts of Illinois as well. And just a little bit of a view of our campus. We have 70 plus programs at the undergraduate level as well as graduate programs. And our programs are broken down into schools and divisions, which include the College of Arts and Sciences, where you will find your sciences, your math, uh, also modern languages and classes of that nature. College of Health and Human Services, where we'll find our nursing program, as well as radiologic sciences. Um, programs in human services, as well as criminal justice and social work. Our School of Education, where you'll find your education programs at the elementary as well as the secondary level. School of Business and Economics, where we have our accounting programs as well as the business, administra business administration program. And then we have the School of the Arts, where you'll find programs in the areas of communication, graphic design, and um, music and theater. Just a little bit about IU Northwest at a glance. We're also a smaller campus, um, which gives you that, um, that close-knit feel. We have roughly maybe about a little under 4,000 students. Uh, we are a very diverse campus. We do um, offer scholarships for our incoming freshmen as well as transfer students. And then we do have scholarships for our continuing students, which are over 200 opportunities. A um, little bit about our programs. We, we have actually administered over, we've administered over um, 27,000 uh, degrees at both the undergraduate and graduate level at our particular campus. We do offer uh, student groups and activities. We have 70 plus organizations for student groups. And then we do offer sports. We have uh, varsity sports. We are a division two school and we offer sports. If you're interested in basketball, cross country, golf, soccer, uh, tennis or volleyball. Uh, as far as our class sizes, 
we have a 14 to one ratio. And as you get up further in your program, you will find that the classes are a little bit smaller. You may have maybe six to 10 students as you get higher in your program. IU as a whole is known for healthcare and because we do service the um, Indiana area in the healthcare field. So we have um, popular programs, the nursing program where we have a 97% uh, pass rate on the NCLEX. And then we actually um, prepare students for pre-professional um, health programs. If you're thinking about medical school or uh, physical therapy. For medical school, we have an 80% um, acceptance rate of our students who apply to medical school um, across the country and compared to the national average, which is about a 40% acceptance rate. Um, it looks pretty good there for us. We're also known as one of the most affordable institutions um, in the state of Indiana, the four-year college institution. And then we're also known as one of the safest campuses uh, across America. We do offer uh, study abroad programs. We have about 400 study, study abroad programs that students can also take advantage of. So I talked about that affordability piece. For the state of Indiana residents, tuition for us is roughly maybe $7,200 uh, for the academic year. Illinois residents, we do have a special uh, tuition rate for you where you only pay roughly 150% of the in-state tuition, which comes out to about $11,600. And then we do have our out-of-state fee. We are still accepting applications. If you have not had an opportunity to apply, you always can visit our website at, at IUN iun.edu slash apply. Uh, we will have opportunity to waive the fee, the fee, which is $35 if you utilize the fee waiver code. And then if you have any questions, you always can contact myself, uh, Candace Rayburn in the Office of Admissions. And just to share, we do have some upcoming events uh, for high school students or anyone that's just interested in learning more about IU Northwest in general, or maybe you need help with exploring what your major should be, or maybe as a high school student, you're thinking about taking a gap year, we would just invite you to visit our events page uh, at iun.edu slash ADM dash events, uh, just to learn about the Spring Forward series of information sessions where you can learn more about college and just prepare for that next step. And as always, we are here just to help you. Feel free to visit our site at iun.edu slash visit. You can come and take a campus tour. You can meet with an admissions counselor to get more in-depth information. Or online, you can build a custom view book where you can get more details about the program that you are interested in. And I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you very much, IU Northwest. Um, up next is Millican University. Give me just a second. Let me get my PowerPoint going here. Awesome. So my name is Gavin Halpin. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission. I'm a St. Louis Regional Recruiter, uh, but I'm glad to be here this evening chatting with you. So let's get started. For those of you curious of where Millican is located, we are in Decatur, Illinois. So if you see the state of Illinois map there at the bottom and the blue indicator, we're about as central Illinois as you can get uh, for just some landmark timeline for you to think of. We are about two hours and 15 minutes straight west of Indianapolis, so pretty centralized. Uh, but the Decatur community is made up of about 70,000 people. We are a smaller private school within that of 2,000 students, so we are a, a good main focus within the community. If you see the top right-hand corner there, that's a picture of our downtown Decatur community. Has a lot of fun shops and restaurants, but I always point it out because it helps show the community uh, connectedness of Decatur and Millican as a whole. So we have several student-run ventures as well in that downtown area. One of the big focuses of our educational approach is a phrase called performance learning. So truly every major has an example where our students are applying immediately what they learn. And several of those student-run ventures that take place downtown 
are great examples of that in the form of a student run coffee shop in the form of a student run art gallery space that is continuing continuously rotating students and alumni artwork and then as well we have a student run black box theater downtown as well that our students truly are managing every stage of that process so it's a great opportunity for our students to feel more connected to the community and more at home and for our members of our community to even take part in events on campus for several of our athletic events. We are a division three institution and have events continuously running, but as well as the performing arts side of things, I mean, be a musical or a lecture, uh, it's not uncommon to see members of the community continuing to interact with our campus community. Here are several distinct uh, rankings that I'll point out here. I'll specifically highlight the third one listed as we know that there are hundreds of schools within the Midwest as well as just within the state of Illinois. One of the biggest things that we thrive ourselves on is being career focused. We want our students to have a plan in place. Ideally, after that four years, they're walking across the stage to get their diploma. Hopefully they have a job. Um, so to be re recognized as the number three best college in Illinois to land you a job, knowing that there are many, many options uh, is great recognition for us. Here's a great snapshot of opportunities and stats at Millican. I won't read all of these to you, but I will highlight we are that small private liberal arts institution with 2000 total student enrollment. Our average class size is 15 and our student to faculty ratio being 10 to one. So what do those stats truly mean to you? They mean that you're never going to be taught by a TA if you were a student at Millican. You're always going to be taught by a faculty member, uh, most likely an individual who's at the highest level degree-wise within their field. And then if you look in the top right, you'll see that we have 50 plus academic programs. And I will break down how those break down individually college-wise in just a minute. As well, I mentioned that we are a division three institution uh, and we have 23 men's and women's varsity sports. We take place in the CCIW or the Collegiate Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. It's one of the most competitive division three uh, conferences across the board. If you look at any one of our 23 sports, uh, and look at national rankings on the Division III side, you'll see at least one team ranked. So it's nice to know that you'll be rewarded as a student athlete uh, for the student athlete experience, but also to continue to be playing at the highest level uh, competition wise. Here are how the individual colleges and schools break down for Millican. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences that would house you know, your, your humanity pieces. So the history, political science, but you're also going to see our standard sciences, the biology, the chemistry within there. I always make the distinction for students that if you come in knowing you're interested in pre-med or pre-vet, you're not majoring in that. Your major is still going to be in the sciences within our College of Arts and Sciences. But at, with, at Millican, you would still have a secondary advisor helping make sure you are at or above the credentials needed for that dream med school or vet school. We have our College of Fights, Fine Arts. That's where we see the majority of our volume of applications for each year, mainly due to our nationally recognized School of Theater and Dance, more specifically our BFA or Bachelor of Fine Arts in Musical Theater. Also within that college would be our School of Music, School of Art and School of Art Technology. Then we have our College of Professional Studies that would house education, nursing, exercise, science and sport. And then we see our Tabor School of Business that has your general business administration, but also a handful of accounting, finance on down the board. When it comes to opportunities for involvement across campus, we do have 90 plus student organizations. On average, a Millican student is involved in at least three organizations in their time with us. Even the student that comes in and says, I'm just gonna do art or I'm just going to do baseball. By the time that their time is up with us, they end up taking part in at least two other areas across campus. So you can visualize the, the opportunities on a smaller campus are really just as uh, plentiful as they are at a larger campus. Uh, as far as all it takes is about eight students to be interested in organization for it to become uh, part of it, the school's history as far as their involvement opportunities. Similar to other presenters you've heard, we do offer the study abroad experience. So the opportunity to go away for a semester, but also even for maybe a seven to 10 day immersion trip. Those are individually faculty led experiences that we see students really take a hold of mainly in their junior year. And finally, uh, if you are interested in applying at all for this recruitment cycle for seniors and then for juniors as well, we've decided that we are test optional. Uh, we have a regular application. We're also a Common App member as well. But again, free application. All we would need to see is your high school transcripts. So thank you for attending this evening or for watching recording and let us know how we can help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Milliken.
And our final presenter for this session will be the Illinois Institute of Technology. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Kaylin, and I am a senior admission counselor here at Illinois Institute of Technology. I am also the dual programs coordinator here. So just to kind of quickly go over Illinois Tech, here's a snapshot of all of the majors that we offer. So we do have over 40 undergraduate majors as well as over 50 minors for students to pursue. Um, our majors are broken down into five colleges, Lewis Col or Armour College of Engineering, which is gonna have all of our engineering options. We do have ABET accreditation, A-B-E-T. Uh, College of Architecture, uh, we have NAB accreditation with that one. College of Computing, which does house our artificial intelligence program. We are the first university in the Midwest to offer an AI program, as well as some cybersecurity and other unique options available for students. And then Lewis College of Science and Letters will have your sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, and all of those wonderful variations, as well as communication, psychological science, global studies. And then the very last thing that we offer is business administration in the Stewart School of Business for our students. As you can see, we are a smaller university. We have 3,000 undergraduates, all 50 states are represented, and we have about 17% of our undergraduates are international, and 40% of students are outside of Illinois. For academic experience, um, over 80% of our classes are 40 students or less. Our average class size is about 22. All of our classes are taught by professors, so you'll never have the content delivered by our teacher's assistant. Um, and we do have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and students can start research as early as their second semester with us. We do have some pre-health options. Um, so if you're looking to pursue that, you can contact me directly, and I can explain our dual programs in more in depth. And the last thing that I want to point out is our accelerated master's degree program, or AMP. This allows students to get their bachelor's and master's in five years. It also allows you to keep your undergraduate scholarship. So it's a great way to get your master's, you save yourself a year and you save yourself some money. In regards to research and out-of-classroom experiences, we have tons of opportunities available for students. So uh, with research ex experiences, like I said, you can get started as so soon as your second semester with us. There are tons of research available. A lot of our students find research opportunities through talking with their professors. We also have Elevate, which houses uh, research opportunities, internships, uh, study abroad opportunities, short courses you can take, competitions, all types of that out of classroom experiences that you're looking for in one central location to make it easy for you to find them. We also have interprofessional projects. It's a two part class. So you'll take two classes for the IPRO and you're tasked to solve a real world problem. So we do have outside companies provide prompts. A lot of it's from our faculty members. The best way to explain to describe it is to talk about a project. So uh, one of our student groups designed a mesh set to be placed inside washing machines to collect microfibers from entering the water supply. Um, so you work with students from all different majors. It's a really cool way to test your knowledge and your understanding of the program that you're pursuing. Um, and this is a, a fun way to end your time at Illinois Tech since you take these classes usually towards the end of your degree. The first thing that you're going to take with us is Introduction to the Profession or ITP, which gives you early exposure to your major, explains what you can do with your major. You may have some guest speakers come in. It's also very hands-on based. So you get that, like I said, early exposure to what you're going to be doing throughout your time here at Illinois Tech. In regards to the social aspects of Illinois Tech, we do have over 150 student organizations ranging from professional organizations like Engineers Without Borders, MedLife, we have a lot of kind of fun, unique ones like rock climbing, Quidditch, uh, acapella groups, tons of ways for you to get involved. And it's fairly easy to start a new group on campus, which is why we always say 150 plus. Um, we do have uh, intramural athletics that you can be a part of. We are a division three university here at Illinois Tech. And we love talking about our esports team uh, there are scholarship opportunities available for those looking to be a part of the esports group. And we do have Greek life and they have houses on campus so you can get the full Greek life experience here. In regards to living on campus, uh, we have a variety of dorming options available for our first year students. So you have Kasich Hall, Cunningham Hall, which are basically copycats of each other. Uh, they are pod style, so they offer triples, doubles, and singles and have fantastic views of the Chicago as well as Lake Michigan. Row Village, which is this picture down here, is suite style. So you have a roommate, you share the bathroom that's connected to another double. So you share the bathroom with three students. And then McCormick Student Village, which is your traditional communal style. So you have a roommate, you share the bathroom with the floor. Um, apartment housing is open for our upperclassmen and then Greek housing is available for students that decide to rush and join a fraternity or sorority. And then the admission process. So 
After hearing all that information and if you're ready to apply, our application is still open for seniors. You have until August 1st to apply. Um, for those of you that are juniors and below, our application usually opens up the first week of August. And like I said, you have until August 1st of your senior year to apply. Um, I do wanna highly encourage you all to apply by November 15th of your senior year. That is our priority deadline to get a chance to be considered for full tuition scholarships. Um, with In regards to the application process, you need to submit a common app and it is free to apply. So we do not have an application fee. We do require your official high school transcript as well as at least one letter of recommendation. We were test optional for fall 2021. We will most likely be test optional for fall 2022. Uh, just keep an eye on our website to see when that is officially um, publicized. And then in regards to our architecture program, we don't require a portfolio, but you are more than welcome to submit one. Um, in regards to kind of the class profile, because we get this question a lot, what does it mean to be admitted? Um, this is what it looks like for the middle 50% of admitted students. We do encourage you to take four years of math and science. Definitely try and get that pre-calculus and above, especially if you're considering some of our STEM programs. And then just super quickly, if you want to take a screenshot of this, here's an idea of our scholarship. So when you apply, you're automatically considered for a scholarship here at Illinois Tech. We also have some full tuition ones that require additional scholarships. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Here is our, well, here's my contact information. So feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Illinois Tech, and thank you to all of our panelists for the great overviews of your schools. We do have some time remaining, so attendees, if you have any additional questions, please do send those through the Q&A. While we're waiting to see what comes in, we have time for one quick round of questions here ourselves. So if I could ask our panelists to turn their videos back on, and I would pose the following question to you. Uh, what's one thing you did not have time to cover in your very brief six minute presentations that you'd like to quickly discuss now, maybe your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact about your school, an upcoming event, etc. Uh, so we'll go in that same order and starting with Embry Riddle. Thank you. So one thing that I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of is um, as a private institution, I know that sometimes private tuition can be a little um, daunting to um, students who are looking at us. And so um, I want to highlight that payscale.com has a best value colleges ranking and um, they actually have Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in their top 5% um, for best value. So what they do in their rankings is they look not only at the cost, um, but also the future earnings. And so um, Students who have an Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University degree um, do have the potential to um, return, get a good return on their investment. Great, right, thank you. Uh, St. Louis? Uh, yeah, something that, that I didn't get to touch on and it should be pretty obvious by our name is we are located right downtown St. Louis, uh, Missouri. And that's a, that's a huge part of our campus, huge part of the culture here is the city of St. Louis. I love it here. I, I moved here, my wife is from here. I plan to raise children here. I think it's a fantastic city, a fantastic area, and a lot of really exciting developments happening uh, right, right by SLU, by SLU and other partners to create a, a better atmosphere for our students. Great, thank you. Uh, Purdue University Northwest. Yeah, so I would have loved to talk to you more about like campus life, but I keep getting questions about our admissions deadlines because I didn't cover that, so I will cover that. Um, so Purdue Northwest has actually rolling admissions. So if you are a current senior or a transfer student and ready to apply for summer or fall, you have until August 1st to do so. If you are a junior um, and you're wanting to apply next year, you'll be able to start applying. That application typically opens end of August, early September, and we have a priority deadline of December 15th for scholarship consideration. Great, thank you. Uh, IU Northwest. You know what, I just want to touch on our admissions as well. We have rolling admissions uh, as well. So we are still accepting applications um, for this upcoming fall. Uh, as far as scholarships consideration, um, our transfer students still have an opportunity to apply to be considered. They have to be admitted and enrolled by July 1. And then the last thing I just want to share is that we are back, as we said, we will be in full swing in the fall with in-person classes um, and not the way it was this past fall. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Milliken? 
I'll just share briefly that we have a virtual campus visit day, actually this Saturday, April 17th. And then we're doing in-person visits, but if you're interested in being in another virtual environment, who doesn't love this uh, and interact a lot with our faculty, that's something you could do. Uh, sign up's pretty easy on our website. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Illinois Tech. Thank you. I don't think I mentioned this, but we are located in Chicago, Illinois. So we are in the city. We are on the south side, right across from the White Sox Stadium, if you know your landmarks. Uh, we're also the only tech-focused university in the city. So you get a lot of added perks of being in a city, plus being in a small school. Great. Thank you. Thank you again to all of our panelists uh, for spending this time with us to share information about your schools. It is greatly appreciated. And certainly thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. We're glad you were able to make some time uh, to learn about these institutions. Uh, before we do close this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. First is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and can please, please complete. And there is one other block of sessions this evening. So please do feel free to sign up for that if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But we want to, again, thank everybody um, and say to all of you uh, students, good luck in your college search and uh, always feel free to reach out to these representatives. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. Uh, have a great evening and uh, enjoy your week.